Greetings, royal family, and welcome to another message by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe Beit Noon Sophie. Yudhe Wavhe. Now, royal family, this message was taught many years ago by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe and is being presented to you today by Yahweh's royal priesthood. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at Yahweh's royal priesthood. www.yahweh144 zero 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 dot com and also royal family join us at the university of yahweh where classes are designed for the godhead visit us at www.universityofyahweh.org also, Royal Family, listen to our weekly podcasts by the University of Yahweh, found on most podcast platforms. We look forward to you being there as well. Enjoy, Royal Family. Tonight, we will continue to learn our responsibilities as the first fruits. We are the first fruits of the house of Jacob. We are the first fruits of the house of Israel. We are the first fruits from among the so called blacks of America to constitute the nation of Yahweh. And the name Yahweh is found all over the earth. And it is found among all scholastic references and reference books, namely your Encyclopedia Britannicas, your Bible, interpreters dictionaries the name Yahweh is found in many different Bibles such as New Jerusalem Bible the Septuagint it is found in the short version with the wrong letter in front of it even in the King James Version of the Bible certainly found in your dictionaries no one of intelligence will debate today about Yahweh being the name of the God of Israel. When I first started teaching 10 years ago, there was great debate, but it's hard to find debate today. That's my work, and that's because of my work. So intelligent people are passing this on to other intelligent people who have to bear witness that according to all of the scholastic references, Yahweh is indeed the only name of God. The God of the Bible, the Hebrew God, the God of history that got things done. And we are the first fruits of the God of the Bible whose name is Yahweh. Feast of Weeks is also an agricultural feast and it is a rite that honors Yahweh as the sovereign one. Feast of Weeks honors Yahweh as the God of Israel, the sovereign one of Israel. And the Feast of Weeks also recognizes the 
fraternal responsibility uniting the nation of Yahweh together, which is bound by our agreement with Yahweh and his agreement with us. In fact, the reason that I'm in your midst in America, refreshing your memory relative to the Feast of Weeks and other high holies of Yahweh, high holy days of Yahweh, is because of Yahweh's agreement with our fathers. Though you've done absolutely nothing to attract Yahweh to you, you have done absolutely nothing as a people to cause Yahweh to remember his covenant with us, his agreement with us. In fact, your life in America has done nothing to enhance the knowledge of Yahweh. Nor would you be classified as a people that Yahweh could be proud of. You are a people who display an illogical mindset. when Yahweh is in fact the logical God. Your people going backwards who love foolishness. They destroyed people. In fact, you didn't send for me. You didn't send for Yahweh and no representative of Yahweh to come and help you out of your condition. And you have to admit, so-called black people of America have a serious problem. Even, even foolish people know we have a problem. And you've never sent for the right one with the right solution. Yet the only one with the only solution is standing before you today. There are many ways that I know I have the only solution. It's because the major reason is I have put into practice the solution that my father gave in the Bible for you as a solution. And it works. My people are trying all kinds of avenues, none of which work. Many live for a dream. And they try to keep a dream alive. And it keeps turning into nightmares. Regardless of what you try and have tried, and whatever you will try outside of my Father, Yahweh, will never work. Last night, I successfully connected you to Yahweh. And I think I successfully disconnected you from Cinderella. <laughs> and all of you that gave up Cinderella and Santa Claus are indeed taking on a new mindset. Feast of Weeks is also called Feast of Harvest. And the Feast of Harvest recalls all of the great acts of Yahweh, such as Israel's deliverance from slavery in Egypt, which means our deliverance from slavery 
in Egypt. We, the so-called black people of America, have now been in slavery twice in recent years. Once during the time of Moses, we were in slavery, and here we are back in slavery again for the last 435 years in America. Tricked and deceived into thinking we were set free in 1865, but we don't act like free people. We demonstrate the mentality of a dependent people. We demonstrate the mentality and the emotionalism of a baby that refuses to be weaned, and yet the mother is determined to wean you. The one acting as your false mother is the white man and any other nation that cares to come and take advantage of you, such as Cubans are doing in, in this city today, Koreans doing it in some of your areas, Japanese are doing it in others. It's just anyone who chooses to take advantage of you do so. Even people from Africa who look like us and darker than most of us take advantage of you. I was shared a testimony as late as today where some of our brothers from Ethiopia are here in this country and they said they are here to get rich from the so-called black man's pocket of America because they heard in Ethiopia that black people in America love to spend their money with everybody but themselves. and told us that because they know we are conscious. We are awake and we are conscious. And it's a fact, we will spend with anybody regardless of his color, so long as it's not one of us. As soon as we hear he's a descendant from a slave, like the rest of us, we're not gonna spend money with those. And those who are blessed to sit under my teachings and enter my school are given irrefutable evidence that we have been taught to think illogically and we are without the knowledge of our true self. And that when we come into the knowledge of our true self, a change takes place in our lives. And only when you come into the knowledge of your true self can you love yourself. And you can never, ever love your neighbor without first loving yourself. You can't possibly love me until you first love yourself. A man without self-love hates everybody in the world while he pretends to love his enemy. When he says he loves everybody, he's a liar. He only loves those who give him his paycheck. And he doesn't love them. He tears down everything anybody builds. <laughs> Even when white people come and build up beautiful homes within the ghetto, it becomes another part of the ghetto. It looks just like the rest of the ghetto, quickly. For those of us who are resurrected into the nation of Yahweh, we are learning of the great acts of Yahweh and our deliverance from slavery. Simultaneously, we learn that we are heirs of all the promises of the Bible. That means we learn knowledge of our inheritance of the land of promise. We, the so-called blacks of America, are heirs to the land of promise. Most of us live in the city and don't own anything. 
and don't think about owning anything. As we come into the knowledge of our history, culture, and language, name, and land, we find out that the Feast of Harvest celebrates Yahweh as the giver of grain. When we study grain, you can drop the G and learn that he's the giver of rain. And we know from study that there is no life without water. And there are no successful crops without rain for the harvest. And all we have to do to have rain in due season on our crops is obey the will of Yahweh, obey the laws of Yahweh. And he keeps his promise to us by giving us rain in due season. He gives us rain for our crops when we need it. When we don't need it, it's withheld. We learn this is the character of Yahweh. There's no such thing as Mother Nature. You can't look at nature and say, Hi, Mom. <laughs> Yahweh is man. Yahweh is divine mind. And it is he that controls nature. It is Yahweh that is the giver of the rain. He's the giver of the grain. Our history is sacred because our father is to be regarded in a sacred manner. We're taught to have a ceremony for the offering of the first fruits. And ceremony is an institution. It means that the first fruits as a high holy day for us as Israel is to be an institution. We are to institutionalize our high holy day. Now, the feast of harvest, the feast of weeks, requires you to present your first fruit to Yahweh. But you must do this of your own free will. It is not my job to force you. It is my job to simply teach you. Consequently, I'm going to need that scripture which says, whosoever will, let him come. What is it? Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Revelations chapter 22, verse 17. That's certainly one. There's another one too, but this one is fine. Read. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. What I'm offering you tonight is free. 
you may freely come, you may freely drink from the water of life. That's what I offer you. The water of life. And all of you who are thirsty for the water of life, you may come of your own free will and drink to your content. And no matter how much you drink, it will not diminish my supply.